good morning everybody how are you all today not great just good he is the only one who is great well whenever you come to the house of god we should always be great amen whether you are hurting you are crying or you are in deep in the ditch whatever is your situation in the house of god there is always fullness of joy so in the fullness of joy you will always laugh like a little baby forgetting all your sorrows amen and that's what god is going to do for you this morning let's all arise for a word of prayer let's lift up our eyes lift up our heads and look unto the living god god is a good god his grace and mercies and yes for ever and ever <coughs> most gracious and loving heavenly father and the lord jesus we come before your holy presence by the blood of the lamb of the living god and we come to you by faith look down from heaven lord and look upon us bend your ears down to hear our prayer and to hear every whisper that comes from the hearts of your dear children look deep into their hearts and know what is inside them look into their thoughts lord and know their thoughts and i pray right now spirit of the living god open their hearts open their ears give them an understanding heart and a listening ear and give them the faith to believe and apply their hearts and i ask you this morning spirit of the living god to give them ears to hear that they may hear what the spirit of god is speaking to the churches in this last days in the name of the blessed lord jesus christ we pray amen, amen. please be seated everybody so once again on this last session that i am here with you i want to thank our dear pastor david white for his great kindness to invite me to your wonderful the gathering church thank you so much this is my third time that i have been to the morivin falls the first time i came i don't know which year was that do you remember 2017 2008 wow 2008 do you know a man of god who lives nearby called steven brooks so he invited me first for their convention we stayed here in morivin falls but the convention was held in a different place and the second time was to the gathering church and this is the third time whether there will be a fourth time or not i don't know or oh, twice here yeah, twice so this is the third time ah okay thank you jerry thank you see good to have you sitting right in the front <laughs> just like uh, shirley keep on reminding her husband what to say next you are reminding me what i should <laughs> today you are seated right here in case i just call you huh <laughs> all right let's get to serious business now all right now when you come into the house of so some some house rules first when you come into the house of god please make sure all your mobile phones are switched off you are here to hear the word of god you are here to hear god speaking to your pastor i'm just a guest speaker today but your pastor is here every week to minister to you and you you, you don't want to hear what another man is speaking to you through a mobile phone 
or you don't want to be busy texting or surfing. If you like to do that, you should go out and do that, not sit here and do it. See, the, the moment we will learn to reverence God's glory, then you will see God's glory. Until then, no matter how much you sing the roof come down, no matter how much you pray, nothing will happen. Not even a slightest spark of a flame will appear in your church. Because God is holy. And the holiness of God cannot dwell with filthiness. Even the slightest bit of filthiness, it will expound his glorious presence. They cannot come. If he comes, every one of you will die. So for your sake, God does not come. And even if he comes, it is the least of his presence. Just the least. The least of his presence that comes. So we must learn to honor God, reverence his glory. The moment you set your heart right with the fear of God and with the reverence of God, then you will see the Shekinah cloud of glory coming down in your church. This is not being religious, you know. Throw away that rubbish teaching that's floating in Christian churches today. When a pastor or any speaker says, do this or don't do that, you say, oh, you've been so religious. Right? Have you heard that? That's rubbish. You're not being religious. You are being biblical. Amen, everybody. Amen. It's been biblical. The Bible calls us to fear God. It's a holy God. He's not your everyday friend. You know, some people say, oh, when I see the Lord, when I see Jesus, I'll put my arms around him and we'll just walk by the beach and we'll sing lullaby to each other. Such people talk foolishly like that because you have not seen how the Lord Jesus looks like. You read Revelation chapter 1. The very Apostle John, who had walked hand in hand with the Lord Jesus for three and a half years, who were like buddies, who always lied on the bosom of the Lord Jesus, but now when he saw the resurrected Lord Jesus, he fell flat on his face. Nobody has to say that. All your comeliness will destroy. Without anyone saying anything, you will automatically fall down on your face flat. That's how much the glory of God carries. Even now, angels who stay in the higher realms of heaven, when they come, you will do the same thing. You will fall to your ground. Not because you are worshipping the angels. Because of the glory and the power that accompanies them when they come. You read this in the book of Daniel, in chapter 10. When an angel, a mighty angel comes and stands before the prophet Daniel, he falls down flat. He couldn't stand up because of the awesome power that the angels carry. We are flesh. No flesh can enter into the kingdom of heaven. The scripture says that, right? Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. And no flesh can glory before the presence of God. So the day that the corporate church will learn to reverence God and fear God, that is the day you will see the Shekinah glory coming into your church. That's the day. So you must purpose in your heart, we want to seek the face of God. Amen. And don't just simply say, I want to seek the face of God then you need to also put away sin. So this is the message that I bring to you from the presence of God this morning. My message is entitled, The Seraphim Are Coming. 
On the 30th of June, 2023, as usual, I was praying one morning at two. I was in South Korea in a prayer mountain, in the northern part of South Korea. And uh, as I was kneeling down to pray, I heard the Holy Spirit say, a seraph, see a seraphim is plural, a seraph is singular, cherubim is plural, and a cherub is singular. A seraph wants to talk with you. The moment I heard that, I began to shiver. Because a seraphim, or a seraph or a cherub, they are not ordinary angels. They, are, they stand in the very presence, fiery glory of God. So it's, it's a little scary thing if one of these wants to come and visit you. So as soon as the Holy Spirit told me that, I began to prepare my heart and be still in the presence of God. And shortly, a fiery burning syrup, full of fire. It, is, it seems like the very syrup, the angel, is made of fire. It's just fire all. You, you can see an outline of his figure. Outline as his form. His face... His body structure are clearly visible, but at the same time, full of fire. Full of fire. You know, I, I, I stay at the church guest house called the Peach House. And on the ground floor, in the living room, there is a picture of a fiery horse. So every time I come down to make a cup of tea, before I, while the water is boiling... I would stand by the dining table and just take a good long look at that picture. Because I have seen horses of fire in heaven. And the, the artist who ever drew it has painted it perfectly. The whole horse was full of fire, made of fire. And that's how the beings in heaven, not everyone... There are some angels that look very ordinary. Some angels look gentle and calm. Of course, they all have beautiful eyes of gentleness and calmness. But those who stand in the very holy, glorious presence of God carry great power and great authority and great anointing. So when this seraph came into my room, he began to... Give me a word for the church. What is the purpose of their coming? So, whenever the nation of Israel strayed away from God, God sent these fiery serpents in the Sinai Peninsula to inflict them as a form of judgment, as a penalty for sin. So the natural fiery serpents, fiery, why they are called fiery? Because when they stink, it sends a fiery sensation all throughout the body. That's what biology says about those serpents in the Sinai desert. Your whole body will burn with fire and they die. Now the seraphim, why they appear as a burning fire is because... It is connected to the holiness and the fire of God. They stand, they stand. Not only they stand, they stay, they, ab they abide, and they reside in the very glorious, holy atmosphere or presence of the Almighty God. And in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1 and 2, you read that they dwell around the throne of God. Not only around the throne, throne of God, like the cherubim, but they also fly above the throne of God. That seemed to be their dwelling places, above the throne of God. And each one of them have six wings. See, not two, like you are accustomed to have heard in the past. Ordinary angels have two wings. The seraphim have six wings. The cherubim have four wings. So they all varies differently. 
see there are enough scriptures to give us some idea that not all angels have just two wings there are some angels who have no wings in case if you wonder how they fly if superman can fly they can fly and they seem very fierce but at the same time have a very benign kind look in their eyes their appearance is very strict very fiery very frightening very intimidating but when you look at their eyes full of tender love like the eyes of the lord jesus every being in heaven have that look because because they are filled with the love of god the love of god is everywhere in heaven and in every created being in heaven they are flooded with the love of god even the trees the waters the leaves the birds in heaven all are full with the love of god even the little fishes okay, let's not go there <laughs> say i almost straight <clears throat> now flying around the throne of god they are the sanctifiers of god's throne and they circle around the throne of god crying or praising holy 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 the lord god almighty who was who is and who is to come and for eons and eons of ages they go around and around and around just praising and crying holy 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 so many years ago i read the testimony of a certain man of god in uh, the us have you heard of this man of god called jesse duplantis yes. this brother jesse duplantis had a once in a lifetime experience of being caught up to heaven so he 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 describes this in his book and he came near the throne of god and he saw this seraphim flying around the throne of god crying holy 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 and he stood there for quite some time to see they flew non stop just crying holy 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 so after some time he got tired of watching them you know if you if on in your sunday service if you keep on repeating a song again and again and again soon you'll get tired right and you feel bored why sing this song again and again and again come on change the song right you will feel that you know so jesse duplantis felt that and then he asked his attending angel why do they just simply go around saying one word again and again don't they have other words to say <laughs> say this is how we humans think see even when you go to heaven you think like that because you are still in your unsanctified mind but when you die and go to heaven is different you'll be totally changed but people who have visitations to heaven in present lives their minds are still in the unregenerate mind and he thinks very human level so the attending angel very calmly explained to him why they are praising god with the same sentence again and again so let me demonstrate to you like this so in the end they go around the let's suppose this is the throne of god right when they fly around they look at god and they see a facet of his character and they get so excited they claim holy 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 and praising god they come around the second time they see another facet and they cry holy 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 and they go around they come another oh holy 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 jesse was shocked and he asked them how long have they been doing that oh they said from time immemorial he was shocked from eons of time the angels are seeing different different facet character of god each revolution they make around him so you tell me how can you limit god we are so foolish in our understanding that is why each time 
when the Lord performed a miraculous act for his disciples, he always asked them this one question. Where's your faith? O ye of little faith. Each time he has demonstrated an act, they still come back to the zero faith. Right? They still come back to the zero faith and they are full of doubt and they think God cannot perform any other miracle. They think that that's all he can do. See, we must learn to take the limits of our mind. I'll tell you one truth today. The day you learn to break the boundary in your mind, that's the day you will step into the miraculous. Yeah, this is your mind that prevents you from stepping into the miraculous. It's your mind. Because it always sprouts doubt. It always sprouts unbelief. What if God doesn't do a miracle? Is that your problem? Is that your problem? It's not your problem. Your job is to pray for the sick. It's God's job to heal the sick. So why are you worried about his job? Tell me. You take care of your business, God will take care of his business. You, know, you need not worry about him. He can take care of him. He's a big boy. So when, you, when the school of evangelism is conducted here, you step out into the highways and byways. And you tell the people, I'm going to pray for you. Don't, don't preach Christ first. Just tell them. Is there any need that I can pray for you? And when God performs a miracle, then you tell them who did that miracle. I was once, I mean, not I was, I once was meeting with my secretary. This happened 40 years ago at KFC. Do you have KFC in Mor- no. You don't have. You are in a forest. Yeah? KFC? Here in Morevi Falls? Really? Huh? Ah, not here. This is forest. <laughs> this is a forest where prophetic people live. Either in the desert in California, Lancaster, or in the forest here. Okay, so. I met with my secretary and we were going through works and she was telling me, explaining to me all the works that she had done and then we were eating and while we were eating I noticed a woman with two big bags in her hands walk into the restaurant and she stood for a moment at the door and she looked at my direction and then she came and sat right across our table. And we went on discussing and to, to prove a point or to mention a point, I took out my Bible and showed my secretary a scripture. As soon as I did that, that lady came over to our table and asked me a question. Are you having a Bible study? Can I join you all? So I said, I'm not having a Bible study now, but I'll be happy to answer whatever questions you have after we are true. She said, all right, please, enjoy your meal. So she ordered her, her set of meal, and she was eating, and we were eating. When we were done, I invited her, please come, come and join us. I asked her, how can I help you? So she stood up, opened her handbag, and she took out three booklets. One was a book on Hinduism, one was a book on Islam, and one was a book on Buddhism. And this woman is an Indian woman from the northern part of India, where there are people called Sikhs. Have you seen Indian men with turbans on their head? She comes from that state. So they are called Punjabis. Say everybody. Punjab. Punjab. Very good. You, you qualify to become missionaries to India. <laughs> so she said, I'm a Punjabi. 
but I want to know the truth. So I'm reading all these books. When I entered into the restaurant, when, when I looked at you, I saw a glow of light all over you. And I thought in my heart that you must be someone very holy, very saintly, to whom I can ask for counsel. I looked at I said, lady, you have come to the right person. I said, sit down. So I began to share my testimony, how from a Hindu, I became a Christian. As I was speaking to her, the Holy Spirit opened my spiritual eyes and I looked into her heart and saw her life. From the day that she grew up from a child till the moment that she walked into the restaurant. What happened in her life? She just had a big fight with her husband. He slapped her and she packed her handbag, I mean, packed her clothes, left the house, not knowing where to go, and she just ended up at the KFC. When I described all that, she cried and she cried and she cried, and she asked me, how do you know? How do you know? Right to the last detail, when my husband stretched his hand to slap me, you describe it exactly like you stood there in my house and you saw all this event. I know, I knew her, I got her attention now. So I asked her, have you seen me in your life before? She said, no. Do you think I have seen you? She said, no chance. Then how did I know all this? She said, that's what I'm asking you. How do you know? <laughs> I said, there is a God called Jesus Christ. He knows all about your life. And I explained to her about the Lord Jesus Christ. And right there in KFC, she accepted Jesus Christ as a savior. Not in a church, right there, in the highways and in the byways. She accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as a savior. So you need the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Not just the preaching of the word, but the accompanying signs and wonders and miracles. When you step out by faith, when you stretch your hand by faith, miracles will take place. Amen. All you have to do is one thing. Crucify this dumb brain. Crucify it. Refuse to entertain any unbelief. Just say in your heart, Lord, I'm going to obey your word. I'm going to lay hands on the sick and pray for them. And it's your job to heal the sick. Amen. Amen. One of your church member who's the wife of the youth leader. She's a Bhutanese girl from DK, right? Where is she? Kanchachuri. Where is she? Far away in the nursery. Okay, far away. Every person I called, they are no nowhere. It's okay, it's okay. You know, she, when I first went to her country, she was a five-year-old girl. I, when I spoke in her church, she was a five-year-old girl who saw me when I came to her church and she narrated the incident to me when I first, the first night I came and she cooked for me. And she grew up attending all our youth conferences in India, got filled in the Holy Spirit, got charged up in the Spirit, received the fire of God in our meetings. So today I have an investment in your church. Yes. Now, when I first went to her country, Bhutan, I remember the very first, in, very first meeting that I had in, the, in, the, in their church. After the service, the pastor asked me to go and pray for one of his church member who is dying. It's a young woman with two little kids, very small kids, and she's been diagnosed with some very strange, incurable disease. And the doctor said she was going to die in three days. So when, I, when the pastor took me to the hospital, I saw this woman frail and skinny. She's just bones lying on the bed, 
hospital bed with the shadow of death all over her face. When I looked at that, looked at her, whatever little fit that I had just flew away. You know? And the, but the pastor has great faith in me. He said, Sadhuji, Sadhuji is an honorable title that they give to men of God or older people, you know. And he said, no, when you pray, God will certainly hear your prayer. I said, all right, let's pray. I, when I prayed, I laid my hands and I saw in the spirit the hand of the Lord Jesus. Now, I, I'm sharing this to encourage you what will happen when you do the same. I'm not bragging about my spirituality. I'm just sharing this to provoke you to a holy jealousy. That you can do the same. And this will also happen to you when you do it. So when I stretch my hand, I saw the hand of the Lord Jesus come upon my hand. And when I prayed, a fiery anointing from the Lord's hand came upon my hand and f entered into her body. And when, when I prayed through, I felt in my spirit that my prayer was heard. But in the natural, nothing happened to the woman. She was still as dead as she first looked like. But I told her husband and her pastor, God has touched this woman, not to worry. So I left. Six months later, I came to a town on the border of India and this nation for a, a three or five days of convention. And during the convention, there was one young woman who was like an antelope, a deer, that was literally jumping here and there, serving us. Serving all the men of God. She was literally jumping everywhere. She was not even walking, you know. She was a bundle of joy, full of joy, full of happiness, just jumping everywhere, serving us. And I noticed this. I thought, oh my God, this must be, in her former life, she must have been an antelope. <laughs> now, don't go out saying that I believe. <laughs> don't cut me out of context. Don't cut that portion and tr post on YouTube. <laughs> Today's Christians are good at all that, you know, right? That was just a jest about former life. And about two days later, the senior pastor who invited me to the convention, while we were eating, this woman was still running around serving everyone. Huh? He asked me, do you recognize that lady? I said, no, who is she? This is the woman you prayed for in Bhutan. You know what happened? The doctor said she will die in three days, right? She was healed on the third day. Totally healed. All things in her body totally restored. And she rose up as if there was nothing in her body. She's still alive today. Living in Nepal. Her husband was a chief cook working in the palace of the king. So, you can do the same. Amen. Amen. So when you go out after the school of evangelism, don't just hear and do nothing. You need to go out into the highways and byways. Knock, knock on people's doors and say, is there anything that I can pray for you all? Even an unbeliever will want a prayer. They will want a prayer. They will welcome a prayer as long as you are not pushy. They say, I'm here to pray, you, pray for you and bless you. And then as you start praying, the Lord Jesus will come and stand by your side. And the power of God will flow through you and a miracle will take place. Then they will ask you, something happened to me. Something happened to me. Then you open your mouth and you preach the Lord Jesus. And you will win souls and bring into the house of God. Amen. Amen. So, the seraphim are sanctifiers of the throne of God. And they fly around the throne of God praising the glory, holiness of God. 
And when they come, they also sanctify a person. Because that's what they carry. The anointing that they carry, they sanctify a person. By the way, angels also are anointed. Like we are anointed. If you read in Ezekiel chapter 28, concerning Lucifer, the scripture says, you were an anointed cherub on the mountain. So angels also have an anointing according to their function, according to their works. They have individual anointings. So the anointing upon a seraphim is to impart holiness, to sanctify a person, bring them to a place of sanctification cleanliness holiness and they like the cherubim walk on coals of fire in the secret places of God there is a place in heaven according to Ezekiel chapter 28 verse 14 where it's called a place full of coals of fire and for some secret reason, which is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible, cherubim like Lucifer before he fell, they walk on the coals of fire. Why they walk on that, I do not know yet, but I'm praying to find that out. When they find that out, when I come a few years later next time, I will share with you. If you have the faith to believe. I'm sure by then you'll be full of faith to believe. Now the seraph, now, from now onwards, I'm going to share with you verbatim what they spoke to me. So every word that I'm going to read to you now is what I transcribed very quickly when they spoke to me. Now, now the seraph spoke to me. We dwell in the holy presence of God. And that is the reason why we appear as burning fire. Once, you know, in Exodus chapter 34, you read that when the prophet Moses came down from the mount of God, his face shone with light, right? So, I was always curious to know how that did that happen. So once I had the privilege in the heavenly realm to meet with the Saint Moses and I asked him this question. He says, sir, how is it that your face glowed with light when you were talking with God? He said, when I saw God, he appeared as a consuming ball of light and fire. And I was in his presence for 40 days and 40 nights. That is earth time, which means it's a continuous stretch, non-stop, day and night, no sleep, no rest, no breaks, continuous stretch. See, when you are in the presence of God or in the heavenly realm, time does not exist. It doesn't exist. On earth time, it was 40 days and 40 nights, but in heaven, it will be just minutes. Minutes. We once had a speaker at our conference in Israel, an American lady from uh, Kansas. She is the one that I mentioned yesterday who had an experience in hell. And uh, so I, I asked her during our private conversation, according to earth time, how long do you think you were in hell? She hesitated to answer that question. I said, look, it's just you and me here now. Just please tell me frankly. She said, my pastor told me not to mention all that publicly. I said, your pastor gave you wrong counsel. And after a little prodding, she said, 70 years. 70 years. If she would count earth time, it was 70 years. This woman literally experienced hell. You should have her in your church. Do you Have you heard of her? Laurie Dito? Your life will never be the same when you hear her. She literally not only saw, experienced hell. And why was she in hell? She was not an unbeliever, you know. She was born again. 
baptized in water, fill in the Holy Spirit, had all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, chiefly the gift of prophecy, and she was on staff in a very highly respected prophetic ministry in the US, on staff. One day she felt like she was dying and her body, spirit went straight down to hell. What, why was she sent there? Because of unforgiveness. That was a chief sin, unforgiveness. Remember the scripture where the, where the Lord said, if you will not forgive another, your father in heaven will not forgive you. So if your father does not forgive you, then your sin remains. If your sin remains, you cannot enter into heaven. Then you'll be cast into hell. So don't keep any unforgiveness in your heart. It will destroy your soul. Get rid of it. Whether you are justified to keep it or not, it's not worth. Throw it away. Get rid of it. So that you can live a clean life. So that you can be with God for eternity and not be with Satan for eternity. Remember Desmond Tutu I mentioned yesterday? Don't be like him. He is so foolish to say, I'd rather be in hell with the gays than in heaven where there are no gays. What an idiotic man he was to talk like that. I don't care. He can be an archbishop, he can be the pope, he can be anything. See, this is basic theology. Right? Basic theology. Doesn't he know basic theology? You don't need to be a theologian to know basic theology or basic scriptures. Any little baby can read the book of Revelation, can know the meaning of it. Every abominable thing is not allowed in heaven. Period. You don't need any commentaries to explain to you what it means, you know. Right? So why didn't an archbishop know this simple truth? But that's how they have become deranged in their spiritual mind. Deranged. Corrupted. That's how much the devil has deceived them into thinking. Everything is okay. It's not okay. It's not okay. So we dwell in the presence of God. We appear as burning fire. Then he looked straight into my eyes and he asked me a few questions. Do you know who your God is? And I was trembling now and dare not answer his questions. Do you know who your God is? He is a consuming fire. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 24. He is holy. He is almighty. He created all things. He rules and reigns over all things. This is how great your God is. Not just a carpenter from Nazareth. I've seen some cars in the US where they carry a bumper sticker. My boss is the carpenter from Nazareth. Have you seen, have you seen those bumper stickers? That is the most sacrilegious thing to say. My boss is a carpenter. Your boss is not the carpenter. Your God is the God of heaven. He's not your boss, by the way. See, how lowly Christianity is in the US. You have no understanding of the glory of God or the holiness of God. You have absolutely no knowledge. That is why you make bumper stickers like that. That is why you are very careless, callous, Attitude towards the living God. You do not know who your God is. He's holy. He's consuming fire. He's the great almighty God. 
the three million Israelites who saw the great awesome works of God with their own naked eyes, even they could not believe all that. For 40 years, they did not believe all that. They kept on rebelling against God. If they who saw could not believe, how much more you who did not see. But you are without excuse because you have the word of God. You are without excuse. The children of Israel did not have the word of God. Though they saw, they did not have the word. But you have the word of what they saw and what is to come. So you are not without excuse. They can be forgiven. They can be excused, but not us. You cannot say, I do not know. You cannot say, my pastor didn't preach on all these things. You cannot say, my church did not preach all things. You have the word of God with you. You have it with you. If not an old-fashioned Bible, you have a digital Bible with you 24-7 all the time. So the question will be asked next, why didn't you read? Why didn't you read? So what excuse will you give next? That I'm busy? A very godly pastor of a certain church was once invited by one of his church members to visit their home for tea. So this happened in England. In England, when they say tea, it either means for lunch or dinner. So you don't be mistaken, that's just tea. So, you know, pastors, like I told you the other day, they are too kind. And they are very shepherd. They always want to visit their members to inquire how they are doing. They are just like a big teddy bear daddy, you know. Not only they are teddy bear with a big heart and a soffy, fluffy heart. They just like to hug all the church members and give them tender, loving care. That's what pastors are, usually. So this pastor and his wife went to this church member's house for a meal, and they had a delicious meal, and the family, the church member, was quite well-to-do. So they had nice porcelain cups and saucers, plates and everything. So once dinner is done, the next is tea. That's English. You go to any English home, a meal is followed by, a tea is followed by a meal. So they serve tea on a beautiful, nice ceramic cup. And then the teaspoon was so exquisitely made with fine china, with engravings and all that. So they all had tea and then the pastor stood up. He prayed a prayer of blessing for the family and he left. And when the woman of the house was cleaning the table, she realized to her great shock, the pastor had stolen her spoon. She fumed with anger. How dare the pastor stole that limited edition spoon. She cannot buy another spoon to replace the spoon because it was limited edition. You know the limited edition, they don't make it anymore, right? She was so mad. This pastor talks holy in the church. He says, thou shalt not steal. And he himself has stolen. She was so mad. She told her husband, look. The pastor has stolen, and she took a picture of the missing spoon. <laughs> and she was going to post it on Facebook. My pastor, the thief. <laughs> so, good thing was, she decided, let me confront the pastor first, then I'll post it on social media. <laughs> so, the, so, the following Sunday, you see, that's a godly thing to do, right? Yes. Go and talk to your pastor. Why did you steal my spoon? If you had asked me, I would have given to you. So the following Sunday, she sat in the church. And when the pastor got up to preach, she could not hear him. She was just boiling with anger. When she looked at him, she remembered thief. <laughs> the word written all over his forehead, thief. <laughs> and somehow, she did not have the heart to confront the pastor. Say in the Anglican church or in the Methodist church, the pastor will stand at the doorway to greet 
all the church members as they are leaving you know so when the pastor came to sh- when she crossed by to sh- and the pastor stretched his hand to shake the hand she just walked away she was angry you know so she thought okay the next sunday i'm going to confront the pastor and the next sunday came and she did not confront the pastor 10 months passed by but the anger was still there anger was still there so finally after 10 months she decided enough is enough let me settle the score today this sunday i'm going to confront the pastor for good and sure enough she did that she so when the pastor shook her hand she hold his hand tightly so that he will not run away <laughs> and she said pastor why did you steal my teaspoon you know during the 10 months the pastor went to many people's house so he was wondering what spoon which house which meal and this lady recounted that day what food she could she could remember what dishes she cooked that day after 10 months amazing memories women have huh so oh, then the person oh yes 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 i remember i remember and he looked at her and he said my dear sister i did not take your spoon i left it in your bible You understand? For 10 months, the Bible was lying on the table and she did not open the Bible. Which means she never read the Bible at all. Never read the Bible at all. So the pastor purposely left that teaspoon inside the Bible to see whether she reads her Bible or not. It was 10 months that day, but how many years was it? Right? How many years was it? So do people do today in the church? You come with free hands, you sit in the church because scriptures are flush on the screen. So why carry a Bible for? You may be like that woman who never opened your Bible. So people of God, I say to you with love today, the question will be asked you, why didn't you read? The question will be asked you, why didn't you read? Not, did you hurt? Not that, not did you hurt? The question is, why didn't you read? You are without excuse. Without excuse. The next thing the seraph said is, we are coming to cleanse the churches. That is their chief work. Isaiah chapter 4 verse 4. When the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughters of Zion, and shall have purged the blood of Jerusalem from the midst thereof, by the spirit of judgment and by the spirit of burning. That's the word syrup there. This is their work. Cleansing, washing, purging, refining, purifying. When they come, they will cleanse the churches. When we come and stand, we will command holiness in the church. That's their work. Those who respond in repentance will be cleansed and sanctified. An example, Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 7. When the prophet Isaiah saw the glory of God, he was so deeply convicted of something that was still lacking in him. And he cried out to God. See, the prophet Isaiah was a good man, a prophet of God. But there were some areas in his life 
that was still not dealt with. Now, take note of that. He was a good man. He was a prophet of God. He saw visions of God, heard from God, flowed in the gifts of the Holy Spirit, he stood in the office of a prophet, yet there were some areas of his life that were not dealt with. That is why he cried, I'm a man of unclean lips. Watch what you say. Watch what you say. Do you use your lips to bless people or curse people? Do you use your lips to talk good about others or criticize, gossip, backbite, murmur? What do you use your lips for? Watch your lips. You may need to pray like how prophet Isaiah prayed. Cleanse my lips. So as soon as he prayed that, we read this in Isaiah chapter 6 verse 5. A seraph came flying in an instant from the glorious presence of God with a coal of fire in his hands. He took that coal of fire from the altar of God. You read about the altar of God in heaven in Revelation chapter 8 verse 1, 2 and 3. All the furniture that God asked the prophet Moses to make were replicas of the true in heaven. So the coal of fire he put on the lips of the prophet Isaiah and he cleansed them and sanctified them. I personally had an experience like this on the April the 15th of this year, 2023, while I was praying and repenting of some, some of my sins and shortcomings. As I was doing that, I saw a seraph come and stand before me. He appeared totally full of light. Light in the, the light is not like the color of the light that you see on the bulbs that come from the tube lights like that, you know. It is lightning white, unadulterated color of the light, unadulterated light, lightning fire and I, as soon as he stood before me I felt a cleansing and sanctifying wave come from that syrup all over me it flew it came upon my head and went all down my feet cleaning sanctifying and refining me that is the work of the seraphim when they come they will sanctify a believer they will sanctify a church we will cause now the first I read was when we come we will command holiness in the church those who respond in repentance this is first category category one those who respond in repentance will be cleansed and sanctified category two if you don't respond in repentance then we will come to cause to remove such people who desecrate the temple of God. They'll be removed. Let me give you two examples. Leviticus chapter 10 verses 1 to 5. Of the four sons of Aaron, two of them, Nadab and Abihu, they were un uh, listen carefully. They were wash, meaning water baptism. They were anointed, meaning they were filled in the Holy Spirit, and they wore the garment of the priesthood. So they were called. So called, wash, sanctified, anointed, serving in the ministry. Yet when they did something that they were not told to do. Or they were not called to do. They were in the right place but doing the wrong thing. Fire came from the presence of God and killed them. You know, only that day when the seraph came and explained to me the scripture, then I understood where the fire came from. All the years I used to wonder where did the fire come from. This is example number one. Example number two, Acts chapter five. Verses 1 to 10. 
a couple called Ananias and Sapphira. They lied in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Boldly lied. Even though, now listen, even though the Apostle Peter gave them opportunity to repent, he asked them, are you really sure? That was an opportunity for them to recant the lie. If Ananias had recanted the lie, he would have been alive. But he again, the second time, he chose to lie. Why? So that he can have his name right on the top of the board. Ananias donated so much of money for the church building fund. He wanted a name, wanted a fame. Because Barnabas had earlier sold all his property and gave it to the apostle. So the apostle Peter read out what Barnabas did. So Ananias thought, I too want a name like that. So that just like the flags that hang around this church, he wanted his picture to hang on the wall of the church. Instantly, when the apostle Peter spoke, he died. Three hours later, his wife came. And she repeated the same lie. She too dropped dead. That is these angels who spew fire from their lips. We remove such people by our sanctifying fire. You know, something happened about five years ago when I first went to Tanzania and never in my life have I given a strict warning message to a church or to a congregation for three days in a row. Even I, I wondered how is it that my voice has changed. I was like roaring like a lion for three entire days. And the message was against false prophets. False prophets in the nation and false prophets in Africa. I, you know, I always like to be a gentleman, never call up by names. But that day, the Lord told me, name them. Name the false prophets in the nation. And one of the message was, if you do not repent, you will fall dead while you are in the pulpit. Even if you are young, you will drop dead. But the doctors will diagnose that you died of heart attack. One week later, several pastors began to die one by one. One by one. The pastor who invited me sent me all the record. And all those pastors died while they were preaching. Suddenly they clutched their, they clutched their heart and they dropped dead. And sure enough, medical science said they died of heart attack. But now I know what really happened. It was a seraphim who comes and stands there. And they spew fire from their mouth. Such judgment from God. And the same thing has been happening in the US. You just that you didn't know. Why are some pastors being exposed of their adulterous lifestyle when it was going on for a long time? Because the time came for God to judge them. That, that time came. God gave them a long rope of time, space of time for to repent. To put away that sin. To judge themselves so that you will not judge. They refused to put it away. Because why? Grace of God. Grace of God. See, when you sin once and nothing happens, you get a little bolder. And you sin the second time. Nothing happens. And you sin the third time. Nothing happens. By the mouth of two or three witnesses, nothing happens to you. You feel in your heart, this is okay. This is okay. And you go on sinning. In God's great mercy, he will send someone to speak to you. 
either directly or indirectly in a message and it you will know that one particular word will strike your heart will convict you if you harden your heart then comes judgment you harden your heart suddenly their sins are exposed and they leave the pulpit in shame or they just simply resign themselves and walk away the seraphim are coming and they are going to cleanse the church no one can stand before the holiness of god no one that is why the lord god lord god told the prophet moses you cannot see my face for no man shall see me and live exodus chapter 33 verse 20 see the fullness of the glory of god no one no one can if you ever hear anyone say including me that i saw the lord jesus it is because the lord shrouds his glory and it comes in a simple form we just see a similitude of the lord and not the real thing the real glory you cannot see no man can see at least not now maybe in heaven in our glorified state the scripture says we'll see the father we'll see god that will be possible but not now at this present time when we come from the holy presence of god those who live in sin will fall dead so you better check your hearts check your life and remove every leaven from your lives and from your miss and from your church remove every leaven so that when they come they will purify you and bring you one step higher and not judge you but those who love the holiness of god will be sanctified they love the holiness of god they love repentance they love the justice of god they will be purified isaiah like what happened to the prophet isaiah isaiah chapter 6 verses 5 to 7 so church arise wake up behold your king is coming bride get ready your bridegroom is coming to receive you Amen. so this is the word that the seraph gave me for the churches so in conclusion i want to say god is going to purify his church because he's coming soon the bridegroom is coming to take his bride away and the bride cannot be a corrupted bride you have heard this tons of time right but what have you done nothing but let me tell you with great love today time will delay no longer you have heard tons of times in the past but now we are in the end times you cannot leave this church this morning not doing anything about it remember i told you on the first day i had no intention to coming to morivin falls but the lord compelled me he said go go you remember that and i told you on the first day that i'm here on assignment this is the assignment to bring this word to you god is going to purify his church the fire is not for the cleansing of sin the first sin that you already repented of but the fire is for the purging and refining purging and refining your soul your spirit it deals with the consequences of sin in one's life not the very original sin that you already repented of when you got saved 
but the consequences of sins that we do every day in our life. So the fire comes to deal with that and the pollution that sin causes in our life. Our thought life, our speech, hearing, our actions. You need that purging and the refining every day. Every day. The roots of sin and the effects of sin are so deep in many people's lives that only God can heal and restore you. No one else can do that for you. Only he can do that for you. Things that you have struggled for years and haven't been able to overcome, this fire from the seraphim will help you to overcome. One word, one spew of a flame of fire from the seraphim will set you free from all those bondages for good. This transformation is much needed as we enter into these last days. Let's read a scripture in closing. Please turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 3. And we will read verse 16 and 17. Luke chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I comes, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the shaft he will burn with fire unquenchable. Two things are going to take place in these last days. A gathering and a burning. Two things. A gathering and a burning. So this afternoon, as we kneel to pray, you are going to make a choice. Whether you are going to be gathered or burned. Let's all kneel down before the presence of God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great art thou, how great art thou. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great art thou, how great art thou. People of God, as you kneel down before the presence of the living God, check your heart. Check your mind. Check your thoughts. Are there any unforgiveness lurking inside you? Are there any things you're holding against another? Are there some secret sins you're still practicing in your life that no one knows? Are there some bondages in your life, addictions in your life that you struggle to overcome? Confess them today. Today, 
is your day of deliverance. Today is your day of sanctification. Today is your day of refining. Today is your day of purging. Today is your day. And not only the people who are here, even this church, the gathering church, to be sanctified. Thank you, wonderful Lord Jesus. I hear the Holy Spirit say, ask the people to truly lay their all before me. Search deep down into your heart and look for hidden sins, hidden leaven inside you. Pride, arrogance, stubbornness, whatever is deeply hidden inside you. You know that. You don't need any prophetic words to come to you. You know your heart. Confess them now. You can either be gathered to the barn of God or be bundled up as shaft to be burned. It's your choosing today. So confess. Confess. Set your heart right before God. You take it out from your heart and lay it down at the feet of the Lord. And the syrup will stand beside you and burn you. Today is going to be the day of sanctification for you. Today is the day that's going to be a day of purification for you. Today is the day that's going to be a cleansing day for you. Today. Today. Right now. So yield. Yield yourself. Make a total surrender. A total yielding. that you will be totally cleansed right now. <clears throat> you should not be like Nadab and Abihu who were doing the wrong thing, doing a wrong ministry that they were not called by God to do. They were in the right place but doing the wrong thing. You should not be like Ananias and Sapira. Lips that are unclean because they lied. You should not be a double-minded person. Unstable in your ways. A mouth that talks haughtily. A mouth that talks arrogantly. Pridefully. A mouth that despises others. Cleanse. Ask for forgiveness. Have your hands done righteous works or unrighteous works? Have you used your hands for righteous works or unrighteous works? I see right now flaming fires hovering over the top of this church right now. And I see many seraphim all lined up 
from one end of the wall near the ceiling right up to another end of the wall they are ready and they are lifting up their hands there appears like a sword in their hands and the sword is also full of fire a flaming sword and i can clearly see their bodies it's full of fire full of fire they are ready to come they are standing here ready to come down in your midst to sanctify you to to cut you from your bondages thank you lord jesus i see them coming down right now several of them are already down now as you yield they are coming down thank you thank you wonderful holy spirit thank you wonderful holy spirit i ask you holy spirit you are the one who is asking this seraphim to come and to cleanse the people of god so now i ask you holy spirit give the command that they will all come down and go among the people of god starting from the pastor of this church and all the way down to the lowest person in the church can somebody have all the children be brought into this church right now quickly please lord i pray now let your seraphim move among each and every one of them right now lord right now from the first person of this church the pastor right to the baby in this church let your sanctifying fire flow all over them right now thank you in answer to my prayer i see all the seraphim now standing at every place in this church every place and among you so yield yourself yield yourself and i pray right now spirit of the living god let the fires from the seraphim come upon the people of god let them feel the burning fire come all over them right now let them feel the fire flow from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet right now right now i pray in the name of the lord jesus let your people tangibly feel the physical fire sweeping all over them even upon the little children lord i pray right now let your fires purging fires refining fires cleansing fires come all over the little ones all over them all over them let their lips be burned let their eyes be burned let their ears be burned sanctify them let their hands be burned i pray spirit of the living god let them feel in physical form tangibly the fire of god all over them thank you lord give them an experience like they've never experienced in their life before right now right now thank you wonderful lord jesus i see one particular seraphim flying all over the this church every ceiling every place of the church and is lighting with the fire he's setting them on fire cleansing sanctifying this physical place Sen- sanctifying cleansing this physical place every defilement that took place here because of words spoken because of actions done in the secret without the knowledge of the pastor secret dealing secret words secret actions that have defiled this place are been sanctified now sanctified now 
sanctified now let it flow fire of god all over this place all over the children all over them sanctify them lord sanctify them let it flow and flow purging them thoroughly purging them thoroughly inside the inner being upon their eyes upon their ears upon their lips let there be a burning sensation let them experience it on their lips and on their hands sanctify them lord sanctify them thank you wonderful lord jesus thank you wonderful lord jesus sanctify them sanctify them sanctify thank you lord jesus thank you wonderful lord jesus every place even the very physical structure of this church sanctify them lord sanctify be purge be cleanse thank you wonderful god thank you wonderful god thoroughly 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 let your seraphim cleanse everyone here cleanse everyone thank you wonderful god thank you wonderful god from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet let them experience this purging fires flow like waves after waves after waves all over them all over them oh thank you wonderful lord jesus i too physically feel the fires flowing in my hands thank you wonderful lord jesus whatever may be your needs whatever may be your sicknesses whatever may be your diseases i command in the name of the lord jesus let the fires cleanse them i command in the name of the lord jesus the bondages in their lives be broken right now thank you wonderful lord jesus thank you wonderful lord jesus flow holy spirit flow this is not enough holy spirit this is not enough i pray for another wave in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus in the name of the lord jesus fires flow flow all over them all over them all over them like ocean waves like cloud billows of cloud let the fires flow all over them 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 let them be thoroughly purged <coughs> thank you holy spirit keep on flowing keep on flowing flow into the innermost being the innermost the innermost sanctify them sanctify their eyes sanctify their eyes and even the eyes of their spirit sanctify the eyes of the spirit that they will be able to see spiritually from this day onwards thank you wonderful god thank you wonderful god oh glorious god oh glorious god oh glorious god thank you lord jesus thank you lord jesus thank you holy father thank you holy spirit oh you are a good god your grace and mercy endures forever and ever come on lift up your holy hands talk to your father in the spirit for a moment now 
You may stand to your feet if you like. Just lift up your holy hands. Talk to your Father in the Spirit, in unknown tongues for a moment now. Come on, speak to the Lord right now. Speak to Him right now. Today, His cleansing fires, His sanctifying fires, is in this mix. Pura basikele birianda basikele Those who are filled in the Spirit, speak in the Spirit right now. Pura basikele birianda shukurubo. There is a blanket of holiness that is in this place. The fear of the Lord is in this place. The word of God says, cry unto the Lord and you will be saved. Today, as you cry unto the Lord, as you open up your mouth and you speak in the spirit, every bondage, every addiction is broken over your lives in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Every chain, every bondage be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. From today, your lives will be transformed because you are filled with the holiness of God. You are sanctified by the fires that proceed from heaven. Amen. Let there be healing that takes place right now in the mighty name of Jesus. As every chain is broken, every bondage is broken, right now let there be healing that takes place in the name of Jesus. Rikaraba Shorobo, Liraba Shekerebe, Shorobo Rikalaba Riandaraba She, Roboro, thank you Lord for eyes are being opened. Spiritual eyes are being opened and blindness, every veil that is over the eyes of the people are being removed right now in Jesus' name. Oh, the cleansing fires of God, the cleansing fires of God. Every unclean spirit, every spirit that causes adultery to take place, we break it right now in Jesus' name. We cast it out in the name of Jesus. It has no place to live inside the temple of God. It has no room to live inside the people who are filled with holiness. Right now, we cast Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that today we are going to go from here people who are filled with the holiness of God, who are filled with the glory of God, filled with the fire of God, and we will go out to the highways and the byways, and we will preach and carry the presence of God when we go there. You are the temple of God. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. You carry His glory and His presence within you. Come on, lift your hands and bless the name of the Amen. living God. For He has blessed you this day. Amen. He has sanctified you this day. 
That when Jesus performed the miracle, after he was done, he tells the person who was forgiven, he says, go and sin no more. Let it be a reminder to you today, even as you are filled and even as you are cleansed, even as you have been refined, as you step out from here, let your lives never be the same. Do not fall back to your sin no more, because right now you are filled with holiness. And the Holy Spirit will help you to overcome. You are called to be an overcomer. Yes.